Hi, Judge Andrew Napolitano here, and you are on Freedom Watch with my guest and longtime friend Ed Rollins, who directed President Reagan's reelection campaign and has become a was a principal White House advisor to President Reagan. Now, you and I have talked many times about Donald Trump. Before we get into how he sure. won, sure. in the past week, has this isolationist who preached a libertarian foreign policy become a globalist? Well, we'll have to see. He, he ran as a populist. Uh, he didn't talk about appointing the chairman of, of Exxon to his cabinet or, or the Goldman Sachs or all the rest of it. Uh, or the commandant to the Marine Corps. commandant of the Marine Corps. I'm, I'm, I'm much happier about the Marines than I am just about anything else, but uh, they'll do a good job. I have faith in that. I think he's an undefined enemy. And he captured, he's probably the only guy who could have won this in the end, uh, as you and I have talked. You know, it was an up and down campaign. There were moments right. moments where he had the momentum, moments she had the momentum. Uh, in the end, he, the last two weeks, he made it about her as opposed to himself and squeaked out a victory. Okay, but, but what would he say or what would you advise him to say to all those people who voted for him because they want him to bring the troops home? because they don't want to fight unnecessary wars. Right. I think he, I think if any change he makes from what he campaigned on, then he's got to really go to the public and explain why I'm doing this. Uh, uh, Syria is out of hand, it's just a massacre or whatever. But I think putting troops on the ground again in this country after 15 years of having troops in the Middle East uh, will basically really hurt him, hurt him very badly. All right. Now, you and I have known each other for a long time, right. going back to Christine Todd Whitman's campaign in New Jersey in the mid-'80s and even Ronald Reagan's before that, and we've talked a lot. All right. And right up till the day before Election Day, we were both convinced, I as a commentator, you as a hands-on political genius, that Donald Trump was going to lose. Well, I think So in a nutshell, how did he win? Well, he won because he tapped into that that Reagan Democrat, uh, clearly in the Michigans, the, the Pennsylvanias, the Ohio's, the Wisconsin's. Uh, Why didn't we see that? Uh, because the polling, the, you know, all we can judge from sitting here is the, is the polling. We can see big rallies, but the pollings, even the even the Fox poll on Election Day that we picked up at 6 o'clock had him losing, losing badly. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what you measure things on. Uh, I think what you couldn't see is the intensity of that voter in the rural suburban areas and those states, those blue-collar states where they came out. The Clintons certainly didn't know they were going to lose until 9, 30, 10, 30 that night. The Obama White House didn't think they were going to win. We weren't alone. I think right. we were hopeful. Right. Uh, okay, so she probably beat him in all three debates. She outspent him two to, outspent him two to one. She had a billion dollars to spend. She had her husband. She had the president. Right. She's the former first lady, former secretary of state, former two, uh, two times elected senator in New York. How did she blow it? Well, at the end of the day, candidates matter. Campaigns matter to a certain extent, but a candidate matters. He captured the American change element that was very, very heavy. And when you look at the post, post polls, the one thing that he had overwhelmingly was people want to change, and he was the candidate of change. And he preached that hard and fast the last two weeks of the campaign. How would you have advised I'll we'll take you back to... Sure. The, the fall of 15, how would you adv have advised any of the 16 Republicans standing on the stage with him to deal with him when he became irascible and bully-like and basically just squashed each of them one at a well, time, that, including his buddy Chris Christie? Well, that's what he did. He, let, he, he squashed them each one by a time. Well, they were all afraid to take him on. They all, they all knew that he had a certain base of support, and they, were, they all thought he was going to go away. They all thought, okay, we can't do anything to alienate his base. So they didn't challenge him. They didn't challenge him on any serious positions early on. Uh, and, and, he, and, he, and he got to be a better candidate as time went on. But early on, there were several people. Someone had to emerge out of that pack. No one did. And I think to a certain extent, uh, uh, Cruz was a, wanted his base. Ben Carson wanted his base. Even, even Christie wanted his base. And they were afraid of attacking him. They would lose the base. He was not afraid of attacking anybody. And he did. He punched all their lights out. And, and had any of them... Uh, gone directly for his jugular and not feared the right. consequences, might he not have become the nominee? I, I, th I think to a certain extent there was, someone would have emo uh, emerged as the alternative. You ended up with Cruz being the alternative, but that was very late in the campaign. Right. You needed someone early on to be the alternative, and, and the reality is uh, uh, that, that could have happened. Uh, it didn't happen, and as time went on, he got stronger. Can Donald Trump govern uh, with the same pugnacious attitude with which he campaigned? Or does he have to be, quote, more presidential? Does, well, he, does he have to wrap his arms around people that hate him? We don't, no. He has to basically not 
not forget those who got him there. I mean, the populist movement that he ran, uh, and he's got to create jobs and he's got to have progress. Uh, uh, he can't become an establishment figure in Washington, D.C. He can't become an establishment pe person around the world, or he'll lose that support that he has among those that base. base. Will we be talking about him as the president of the United States six or seven years from now? I think there's a potential there, being perfectly honest. I, I teach a course in the presidency. I've studied the presidency's past and future. Uh, and my sense is if he does it right, he can be another Teddy Roosevelt, a bigger-than-life kind of figure. Uh, but he's got he's to perform, and he's got to basically not get distracted, uh, not be tweeting, not doing all the stupid things that he sometimes does. My sense is he has to basically make this country move forward, and he has to create jobs. Every time I talk to you, I learn... And we've been doing this for 40 years, yeah. talking to each other. It's always a pleasure, Ed. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Great. From New York, defending freedom, whenever they let me, Judge Napolitano. See you next time, America.